Hello, my name is Lee and welcome to this video tutorial. In today's video, we're going to look at how we can create an event within a blueprint. Now, before we do that, let's quickly review what we did last time. Last time we created a variety of different variables. We looked at each type of variable, what it does and some of the functions it serves. Now, creating a variable is good, but if we can't change the variable at game runtime, then it's kind of pointless having a blueprint. So in order to execute any um, execution of a blueprint, we need to create an event. Now there are several types of events available to us, um, but we're going to focus on mainly four of them today, the most common ones. Now to get an event, we can right click within the graph. You can see once I right clicked, I can get this um, pop-up dialog and we're going to type in event. Now, as mentioned, you can see there are several kinds of events available to us, but today we're going to focus on um, mainly four events begin play. Event end play. Event tick. And there's going to be one more called a custom event, but we will create that one later. First of all, let's talk about these three. The first one, event begin play, executes anything along its execution path whenever the game begins. The second, event end play, executes anything along its path whenever, for example, an actor has been removed from the game. And the third one, the event tick, executes for every frame that is rendered within our game. So if our game runs at 60 frames per second, then this will execute 60 times within that second. If our game has 30 frames per second, then it will execute 30 frames within a second. Okay, great. So we have created three different types of events. Notice that each event is red, indicating it is the starting point for any of our execution. Also notice there is no input because as I said, it is the starting point for any of our code to execute. And also notice that, for example, the final two here also have a, an additional input for variables. And you can see that it's color coded based on the type of variable that can be inputted. So let's begin and create a variable that we can now modify within the game. Now, do you remember how we can create a variable? That's right, we click the add button right here on the left hand side, and we choose the option here that says variable. Now we're gonna call this character name and press enter. And I'm gonna click and drag this into our graph. When we let go, you notice we are presented with two different options. One is the get character name, and the second is the set character name. First of all, let's choose the get character name. What this does is it gets a reference to our character. And let's click and drag this in here and let's choose set character name. Now notice by default, they are booleans. Remember, if we want to store some text, we need to use a string. So what we can do is we can select our variable here and we can choose the option that says string. It's going to ask us, do we want to make the changes? We're going to choose change a variable type and it's going to go ahead and compile those for us and we can close this. Now notice that the colors have changed to indicate which type of variable it is. Okay, so events begin play. So whenever the game begins, we want to set a new value for this variable. So right now, the value for this, if we press compile, is nothing, right? It has no value set here. So we've basically got a, an empty container. So we want to set a name for our character. Let's say we're gonna call him Bob the Cat, okay? And we compile this. What we've done is we've created an event begin play. So whenever the game begins, set the name of the character and set it to Bob the cat. Now if I were to close this, I'll just bring it off screen here and press the control space button space bar in order to bring up the content browser and click and drag this into a game. What's going to happen is whenever we play the game, the name for our character will be set. So we press play. Basically what's happened is we set the name, but we can't see that, right? 
So let's introduce you to a new type of node called a print string. So let's click and drag from the execute from the output execution here and type in print string. Now what a print string does is it takes a value such as a variable and allows us to output whatever is stored within that variable to the screen. So here I'm going to click and drag this over here and notice how this color, the string color, correlates with the type of a variable that can be inputted here. And essentially what we've done is we said when the game begins, get a reference to the variable that's called character name, set the name, and then we want to print it, right? So this variable that is now empty has been set and we print that value. Now, if I click the drop down here, the little arrow that points down, the, we have a time here, a time duration of two seconds, which means that after two seconds, the text that will appear on the screen will disappear. So I'm going to increase this to about 10 seconds and press compile. And I'm going to close this actually. Now, when we run the game, notice in the top left hand corner, we'll see blue text that says Bob the cat. So as we can see here, it says Bob the cat, which is essentially just printing the variable to the screen and allows us to see that what we have created is actually working. Let's bring it to the content browser and open this up. Now, remember I told you that the event tick executes this code for every frame that is rendered. So if I was to hold the alt key and click on the execution pin here, it will break the connection between the two. And if I plug this into the event tick, what's going to happen is for every frame that's drawn, it's going to loop through, right? It's going to go through once and the second frame again and the third frame again and fourth and so on and so forth. Essentially, what will happen is we'll see a list of the name being set over and over and over again for every frame that is drawn. So let's press play and notice the list that will appear immediately. So as you can see, for every frame being drawn, it's, reset, it's setting the variable. Okay, let's move over here now and break this and move this over here. Okay, so the last kind of event we're gonna look at here is a custom event. So let's type in custom and we can see we have this custom event and let's call this name underscore one. And we plug this in here. Now, what a custom event does is this will execute whenever it is called. Right now, nothing is calling this event. And to verify that, if we to compile this and press play, you'll notice that we don't see anything on our screen, no text in the top left hand corner. So to show you exactly how this works, let's take the event begin play and click and drag from this. And we're going to type in name underscore one. Now what we've done and notice the color has changed here is we have said, Hey, when the game begins, we want to call this event. And then what is ever, whatever is connected to this event will be executed. Hence the reason why we can have an input and an output so we can execute whatever this is and then continue to do something else on the output execution. So we have to press play. Notice that we now get the text in the top left that says Bob the cat. So as you can see here, it says Bob the cat. Now let's move on here. Um, let's just to drill this idea of what the event tick is doing. Let's disconnect this and plug this into the event tick and do something like this. Now we're going to take these by creating a marquee selection. I'm going to press the control C to copy and control V to paste. Now remember, uh, or I didn't explain this to you, but we can only have one of these events within blueprints executed one time. So we can only have one event begin play. We can only have one event tick and so on and so forth, but we can have multiple custom events, but they have to be named differently. So let's call this name underscore two. And let's change the name of our variable now. So now it's Bob the cat. Let's call this Bob the dog. Okay. Now what we can do 
is we can now call this new event. So let's say name underscore two. Okay, so just to clarify what's going on here, we have an event begin play and we then called a custom event that's called named one, name one. And name one says, hey, we want to get to the variable and we want to set the name to Bob the cat. Then once that has completed, on the execution of that, we have name two, where it says, hey, take the name for whatever is stored within character name and change it to Bob the dog. And what we'll see when we run our game is that this will execute one time and then on the next frame it will execute again and again and again essentially meaning that we will cycle between the two names as each time the frame is drawn so if i press compile and then go to play now notice we have a list that alternates between bob the cat and bob the dog okay so just to wrap up here we talked about events the different types of events and what they do there are many different types of events as mentioned, but today we talked about the most common ones and uh, we talked about how we can create custom events and how to call them within our blueprint. So with that being said, that is the basics of creating and executing an event in blueprints. I'd like to thank you for watching. Don't forget that I have created a Patreon. So if you want to support this channel, please go over there and give me a support. Um, any material that is used within the tutorials will be available there so in the future if i have any 3d models textures and so on and so forth any projects that are being worked on will be available to those patrons but if not um all the material that i create will always continue to be free here on youtube and um with that being said i'd like to thank you for watching and until next time bye bye for now